Hello again everybody, you are Supreme Toys here with a long overdue action figure review. This is the Mad Balls Trashing Pumpkin from Need for Speed No Limits, produced by Premium DNA Toys. Now I bought this figure over two years ago from Megalopolis Toys. They are now defunct and they are exclusively Premium DNA now. Um, before they went defunct, they had started Premium DNA. They were going to do their own action figure line, and they were going to be exclusive to Megalopolis Toys. That didn't work out. But Premium DNA is still kicking, and I'm surprised I finally got this figure. It's been over two months since reviews started popping up online, and I got this in the mail just a few days ago. Um, it's a relief to finally get it. It's a relief to, to know Premium DNA fulfilled all their orders through Megalopolis. Um, as far as their own products are concerned, I'm still not sure about anyone who ordered anything else that did not get their orders or refunds. But as far as their product, as far as I know, they're actually delivering. Let's just get by all that. Premium DNA has surprised me and given me everything that I've paid for since I've been dealing with them. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that continues. I love their products. I did the Barnyard Commandos review recently. I look forward to their Battle Toads. I look forward to their Earthworm Gym and everything else they're doing. But let's go ahead and get a gander at this packaging. Now, I don't know anything about the character. I didn't play Need for Speed No Limit. I just loved the Mad Ball figures that they produced, and so I was excited to jump in on the bandwagon and get this extra figure. The packaging looks pretty cool. It's got the Need for Speed logo, this Need for Speed car, and Trash and Pumpkin here in the background with the Mad Balls logo. Again, Need for Speed Mad Balls crossover logos at the top. Nothing on the side. Really cool box art on the back. I love this trash and pumpkin. That's just a really good sculpt right there. Nothing on the side and nothing on the bottom. This is a slip case like Super 7 and all the other products that uh, that Premium DNA had done. So let's go ahead and pop it open. First impressions is wow. <laughs> Now, as the case is with the packaging, it's kind of cloudy because it's a clamshell inside of a box. But I can tell you right now that I am not disappointed. <laughs> Those skulls on the head are amazing. Um, this has the has has a swappable head. Originally, the Trash and Pumpkin was supposed to be released normally without an exclusive head with other retailers um, and the premium DNA was supposed to be exclusive extra head if you ordered it through them I don't know if they kept that they might have given the extra head to everybody I haven't really looked at any other reviews yet I didn't want to get spoiled but uh, this is a pretty cool little box art all the Mad Balls packaging are, are pretty good like they do the art they uh, have the character art right here I actually couldn't throw these away. I have a friend who's an artist. I actually gave her the packaging to my other Mad Balls because I just did not have the heart to throw these little standees looking things away. And in the back, they got the uh, all the accessories. It comes with a pitchfork, a tire iron, a piston, and a severed hand. Huh. Anyway. I'm super excited. I've been waiting two years to get this. I also ordered the glow-in-the-dark version from Big Bad Toy Store. It is currently in my pile of loot, which I have not shipped. I will not be doing a review of that. So we're going to get to know Trash and Pumpkin here in this review. So there's a single piece of tape holding it shut. Cardboard insert has another Trash and Pumpkin logo on it. 
This is a double clamshell. So you have his accessory shell here, which is pretty immaculate. He's got two, four, six, eight, ten, well, nine pairs of hands, and then a severed hand, and then his uh, three weapons, and then his extra head right there. So this is taped right here. Oh, oh, oh no. All right, let's get this trash out of the way. First off, before I even mess with the figure, look look at this. Look. Look at this head sculpt. My god. This is um ugh, this is phenomenal. This is just as good, if not better than the other Mad Paul figures so far. He's got his little eyeball popping out right there with his little tendon veins. The eyes are painted so cleanly. He's got a little worm right here hanging out of his mouth. Slime, man, the worm up here, spider, little vine there, slashes in the back with more worm coming out. He has a knife stuck in the back of his head where they carved him open. Man, this is such a glorious, glorious figure. And the uh, peg hole for the head is so small that you could actually just have that on your shelf. This is the one thing I love about the um, Madball figures. If you don't care for the head popper idea and you just want to have little plastic art action figure style Madballs, there you go. Pop their head off, put them on your shelf just like that. This head is amazing. This is probably the one I'm going to be using. This this head here is uh is great too, but it's very like I feel like this is more a vintage style. Maybe what the original Mad Ball would have looked like with this theme. Um, he's got the little cross here in his eye socket. Interesting. Slime out of his mouth. Slime around the head. Another giant gash or two on his back of his head. <clears throat> the little leather vest is stitched all the way around. This this is this sculpt is just sick. The paint apps are sick. I'm just enamored. I love the little uh, <laughs> smiley face pin. Man. Now, a little leg, loose, loose leg there. These are fully modular figures. So from head to toe, you should be able to pop him apart and swap parts with other Madball figures. I don't even know where to start. So let's start with the articulation. The heads are pretty standard, just... Really, you're only going to get a turn. Got shoulder and a elbow and hinged wrists. Got those painted claws, painted vines. The vines are so well done all the way around his arms. I love the, the green wash on the arms. It just really looks... As, Man, I, I'm. Oh, uh, that's okay. Modular parts. It's meant to do that. And I'm glad they do that because I wish more toys were modular like this. That's why I think uh, the Motu Origins is a big success. The modularity is. It just adds to the play factor. The play fun. Joints are hit and miss with tightness. Some of the uh, joints are looser than others. Not a lot to do here in the in the stomach region. Get a little bit of a crunch and a twist. This vest is really firm, so it kind of gets in the way. Um, let's see. I don't know if you can see up in there, but he got a little thigh hinge on a swivel, so it kind of does what it does. The style of these figures make it kind of wonky in the way of articulation but you definitely can get some fun poses with these toys i have my mad balls posed out pretty good on my shelf um this is the one thing i can say i have collectibles from every single company you can think of so far premium dna has been so good 
I have every single figure that I've bought from them on a shelf. I have not just opened it up like, oh, that was fun, put it in a Ziploc bag or a box and shoved it away in a closet. I do that with a lot of stuff. I have a bunch of Hasbro and Mattel stuff just put away because it's not, it's fun, but it's not interesting to look at. This, this is amazing. This is an amazing figure. Let's see how the head pops off. Uh, not too bad, not too bad. Again, get another look at this head. I love these heads. These heads are amazing. Oh my gosh, this, they're just phew, worth the wait, definitely. Definitely worth the wait. Let's go ahead and take a look at these uh, accessories. All right. Because one thing they also did very well with the other Mad Balls are their accessories. The accessories on the other Mad Balls are insane. All right. Got a bloody pitchfork. You know, I don't know if it's meant to be bent, but it looks cool that way. I don't care. Um, look at the detail on this. It's even got a little screw sculpted in. It looks like intestines stuck on the uh, pitchfork like you got somebody in the guts. There's a giant worm wrapped around the handle. They're very nicely textured, very nicely painted. Alright, he has this piston accessory. There were some pistons with uh, one of the... Uh, Harner Commando, so apparently somebody up there likes pistons. At least I think this is a piston. That's what it looks like. Or cam, or whatever you call it. Um, it's very nicely painted. Very nicely sculpted. It's got some wrapping on the handle. Nails and screw. Well, it's just screws. These are all screws. They got screw heads. Screwed into the top for some reason. The wash on it is very nice. I like this. But my favorite is this tire iron. Look at this tire iron. There's a vine wrapped around it. He done jabbed it into somebody's eye socket and pulled their eyeball out. And then the, the little tendons wrapped around. Golly. The ends, of the, the ends of the tire iron are even sculpted out. So if you had like a little car, you could use it to change your tires. It's a really, really nice accessory. Now let's check out this severed hand. I don't know what the deal is with this. I don't know if there's any significance to the severed hand. It's just a zombie hand. It's got uh, some skin splotches on the back. It's okay. I guess you could like sort of like say it's the mechanic's hand or something. I don't know. But the rest are various hands like an insane number of hands here I can't even he's got this pointing hand very nicely painted very nicely sculpted all the fingernails are done and this is throughout and then he's got another pointing hand for the other direction with a vine on the back the consistency here is amazing He's got these two semi-grabby hands with vines on the back. He's got a left and right gripping hand. It's interesting that some of these have vines and some of them don't. So I guess for whatever style you want the figure to have, you get a little bit of everything. You got two open grappling hands. And then another grabby hand. The grabby hands are different widths of openness. So I guess depending on which accessory you want, maybe it's easier. One of them's got a bind though, so maybe that's just a variant. Some of them have binds and spikes, some of them, some of them don't. That's a great plethora of hands, I gotta say. A lot of accessories here. I believe this was a $35 figure at the time. It might have been extra with the extra head. I don't remember. It was over two years ago that I ordered this, so I'm not exactly sure what the price was. But compared to how much things have gone up today, well worth it. Well worth it. This is an amazing toy. I'm going to put this new head on. See how hard it is to put it on here. Ah. 
Uh, a little tight. I'm gonna take some muscle to get that on there. Okay. Not sure which weapon I want him to have. Definitely like the pitchfork. Maybe the pitchfork in the, in the right hand. Now this is a sort of a semi-pliable handle, which is great. I like that it's, you know, got some give to it. Oh. Now the feet are kind of loose and wonky, but usually I can get these guys in a pose to where they won't topple over. They got pretty large flat feet, so it shouldn't be too much an issue. I feel like, I don't know, I don't know, which one of these should I use? What can we do with the tire iron here? Doesn't really want to grab that one very tightly. Is there a better hand for that? No. Maybe the pointing hand. The pointing hand sort of, sort of can grip. Yeah. We won't worry about that later. Let's try this big hand. There we go. Big hand for his piston kind of a loose fit but it's better than fighting or having to reheat anything that's a big pet peeve with me like I mentioned over on other reviews is having to heat up anything to swap parts I can't stand having to do that notice the problem right there his legs are so loose that he sort of wants to shuffle down not too thrilled with that get this the worms are cool but it's like right in the middle of the pitchfork so it kind of makes it difficult I don't want to paint rub anything and that's definitely probably something that's gonna happen there we go yeah his legs are so loose That's the only negative I have is how I love that it's modular, but the looseness of those legs is pretty, pretty drastic. Now, just for comparison, I'm going to bring in Bruise Brother. Give you, and the loose leg thing has been pretty uh, standard with all of these guys so far. Got Bruise Brother right here. The scale is great. I love them. These don't really go with anything else. <laughs> They're kind of their own thing. Um, and that's what I love the most about them. Now, these parts should be modular, so... I don't know how hard it will be to get his arm off. Yeah. Takes a little bit of work. Takes a little bit of work. But... Oh! Yeah, a little bit of work. And a smack your knuckles so you should be able to take uh, Bruce Brothers arm here and fit it yep right in there I love that that's amazing <laughs> it's a feature like I said modular toys are something that have been popular in the past and I wish was more prevalent today and I'm glad that there are companies like this that are recognizing that because it's fun look at this now I got two trash and pumpkins and it actually looks pretty cool <laughs> I gotta say um, these mad ball toys are great loose limbs pretty much gonna happen with any action figure sometimes but the aesthetic of these guys are amazing these these figures are gorgeous it was worth the wait because I was hoping that they would be what they were. It took a while for the first wave of Mad Balls to get out, um, but they came out amazing. This Trash and Pumpkin 
is no exception. He's beautiful. I love that head sculpt. Oh my gosh, both of them, but this one especially. You guys are killing it. Please keep it up. Please don't let us down. You've got my money as long as y'all keep, keep them coming. I hope y'all have worked out all your kinks and y'all are headed towards great things because y'all started great. Y'all started great. Y'all are still great. Now, like I said, it's been a while. It's been over two years since I ordered this figure. And Premium DNA has a bad habit of not answering emails or questions from customers. I've sent I don't know how many emails over the past two years inquiring. I did not get a single response from any of those emails I sent. But here my figure is. Um, patience is a virtue. Did I like waiting the two years? No, because all I could wait on was if they would make a public announcement, update their their Instagram or Facebook page or their website. And they did periodically, and they gave us hints that, yeah, they're still coming, but they left us all in the dark for pretty much most of the time, which is pretty bad. Super 7 is notorious for long wait times. I waited over two years for a particular wave of Thundercat figures, and they were disappointing, <laughs> to say the least. They were not what they were promised. But they kept us in the loop. They said every month or so, they're like, yeah, we're still having issues. Yeah, they're still coming out. They let the customers know what was going on. Now, that transparency doesn't always help. People still complain. I understand that you're not going to make everybody happy. But it alleviates the stress that I think you know some of us feel like we're going to get ripped off. I think plenty of us are fine with waiting. I know I am, especially if the product is like this. This is great a 10 level product. I, the paint apps, everything is amazing. They work like they're supposed to. The accessories are amazing. I want more of these. I want you guys to branch out with other crossover carriers. Get a Predator, an Aliens license. Uh, get get a bunch of the horror maniacs like Jason and and Freddy Krueger and madball them. <laughs> I'd love to see that stuff, but keep up the original stuff, bring in some concept characters and get to the ones that we didn't get. In fact, I think there were a lot of knockoff madballs back in the eighties. Try to get some of those designs. Like some of them were actually really fun. There was a Dracula in one of those, those fake madball lines. That was pretty cool. There was a couple skeleton heads that were pretty cool. There's a lot of great content out there that they, they can draw from, and I hope you guys keep bringing them. Keep bringing them. I hope that your company's doing well. I hope y'all are actually making money off this stuff. I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy that y'all are getting to a good point, and I hope y'all get further than that. Anyway, I think that about covers everything I wanted to cover with this guy. I love him. He's going right on my shelf. Even his extra head. <laughs> And I appreciate it. I'm glad that it got here. It's long overdue, but it was well worth the wait. Don't let us wait like that again. <laughs> anyway, this has been the Need for Speed No Limits Trash and Pumpkin from Mad Balls Review by Premium DNA. And I am You Are Supreme Toys. Thank you for watching.